today's gonna be an interesting day driving. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> You're Tried to hit the brakes as soon as I saw a car. It was an Arabian horse farm. You would take a left, past your first parking lot. Because there's actually a lot of history here. To Native Americans, the land is a living... Is down to 12.4. What you can do when you don't have a generator. So, the T-Mobile. Hope that tail swing doesn't hit that fence. Heading back to what used to be home. We spent the night halfway. Texas, you have your Bucky's. Oh. We have our one. You can't now because of COVID or they just quit doing it all together. Feel nervous about driving out of here? Mm -hmm. Coming home. And there's that three-legged deer wedding that is going to be tomorrow. <laughs> I do. Well, we're leaving the RV Hall of Fame and Museum in Iowa. We're gonna stop at that harvest host looks super super nice yeah. and uh we're supposed to have good burgers too Ooh, you didn't tell me that in case they run out and they only have one left <laughs> give you guys some power here Is that better let's see we got to turn our lights on for the camera tire pressure monitor system check shell's got her phone check tow mode tow mode check Go. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Did we? You know what? <laughs> we're not ready to go. We're not ready to go. All right. Now we're ready to go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, where's my GoPro? Got my GoPro. Now I'm ready to go. All right. So let's go. When I'll be coming home. Oops. Then I'll be at your door When I'll be coming home I plan to let you know The longing of my heart The wish I carry high Whenever we're apart Takes me through the night when I look deep into your eyes. Today's gonna be an interesting day driving. It's going to be windy. Right now, it is 21 miles per hour winds. We may be getting, it says, into 40 miles an hour winds. I can uh, already at 21 miles an hour, I can feel the wind. Not doing any swaying, but I can feel a little bit of jerking. Reminds me of that one skit Saturday Night Live. Those two guys are in the yeah. 70s disco and they're doing. Hey, babe. Come here often. Oh my gosh.
twenty-six thirty. Yes, Good lord, that a lot of money. Thank you. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> sorry. sorry about that. Yeah, I'm sorry too. When I'll be coming home. Then I'll be at your door. When I'll be coming home. I plan to let you know. I carry high Whenever we're apart It takes me through the night When I look deep into your eyes I can't even think of the city of Chicago without thinking of that episode of Married with Children with Kelly. Mm -hmm. She was either playing a meteorologist or... Girl. Oh, yeah. She was a weather girl. For the day, for some it reason. is strumming in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Today, it's not strumming, it's nice weather, but we are passing through the outskirts of Chicago. When I'll be coming home. Mm -hmm. Over at a rest area here. Use our facilities. Uh, check everything out man when we were going through Chicago uh, well the, the area there somewhere right before Juliet there was an area before bridge that had a huge dip <laughs> and I yeah. tried to hit the brakes as soon as I saw a car the wind uh, it's been uh, steady about 25 where we're at right now but um, gusts up to 40 uh, we feel a gust every once in a while mm -hmm. but Hasn't been too bad. We haven't, the trailer hasn't really uh, had much sway. There was a couple times when it gusts, and I looked back and I just saw a little bit. I was surprised, not much at all. We've been following some other uh, travel trailers that were going a lot slower. We're still able to maintain our 62 miles per hour. And uh, those trailers, we can see them doing some swaying. Mm -hmm. That was back in an area where it was saying it was 21 miles per hour steady. Which makes you a little nervous when we haven't driven this in uh, high winds yet. All right, looks like we got an hour and 43 minutes left. We should arrive there between 4.30 and 5. Probably closer to 5. Just in time for supper. Mm -hmm. Head southwest toward I-80 West. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> them they told us that we need to park over to the far right and we look at some pictures online and it was this area over here but there's some cars here so we can't right now so we might have to do that after they leave so we just parked over here and then you're supposed to park with this view along here it's just not very level here at all but hey to make it work so this would be the way you would be coming in you would take a left, pass your first parking lot, go all the way to the end, and park along the right-hand side. What were you reading about this place? Well, they hold the John Deere Classic uh, here every year, PGA. Mm -hmm. And then 
Um, used to be like a horse farm or something, didn't it? Oh, well, yeah. Before it was a golf course, it was an Arabian horse farm. Wind whispers in the tree. Hidden secrets are hard to keep. Sunset in golden fields. Palace warrior. Opted to sit outside every once in a while. A gust whips around I know. here, but like, right now there's no wind. It's like every once in a while it's. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hold your hat. But this place, the views alone is yeah. worth it. Very I mean, pretty. I mean, look at this. I'll show you. TPC Deer Run is situated on a piece of property with a tremendous tale to tell. The land's past includes Native American settlements, farming, coal mining, and most recently, one of the top horse and cattle breeding programs in the country. Remarkably, John Deere, Quad City, and property history all intersect at this 385-acre parcel of land. Homemade. Yeah, so Dressing. these are called Parmesan kettle chips. And, uh, Even they're, though they look like ripples, <laughs> they're uh, they're an appetizer. They were six dollars, but they look good. And what do you remember? Comes with they... homemade Parmesan dressing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those are good. You heard it from her. Mm -hmm. We give it up. Mm -hmm. I know we're eating like pigs. We're hungry. <laughs> Sorry. I had the Caesar salad. I had to think about that for a minute. Mm -hmm. Like Minus it. the croutons. And what did you have? The bourbon pork chop sandwich and coleslaw. That's a coleslaw? Well, pardon me, but do you have any gray poupon? So, <laughs> I forgot what I ordered. I didn't order the Caesar. And the waitress wrote it down right. The cooks just gave me the Caesar. I ordered a cob. So I'm going to show you what the cob looks like. How's that sandwich? Very good. How would you rate your sandwich? The sandwich, I would say, is it's an eight. It's very good. What would you rate that coleslaw? <laughs> uh, about a seven. Really? You're even giving it a seven, even though how hot it is? It's got a kick. Some people may really like that coleslaw, being hot like that. So I read something online that they name each of their holes something to do with the land and what it's known for or the landscape of that hole because there's actually a lot of history here. It is hard not to be moved by the fact that Erskine Wilson was building his stone house and farm on this land at the very same time a man living 70 miles upstream named John Deere was starting his plow company. At the very same time, the communities that would become the Quad Cities were incorporating. Participants in the course design felt that it was very important for every visitor to understand the historical significance of this piece of ground, and so they named each hole on the course after the land's rich heritage. For example, the signature hole at the TPC Deer Run is the 16th and is named Mother Earth. Views like the ones from the 16th tee represents the types of features that have drawn people to this property for centuries. Archaeological evidence indicates Native Americans settled and lived here as far back as 5,000 years ago. To Native Americans, the land is a living being called Mother Earth who cares for all her children by providing food, shelter, beauty, and a place for contest and play. The early inhabitants enjoyed many sporting activities. The 16th hole is dedicated to these early inhabitants to pay tribute to the spirit of respect and competition they first brought to these very grounds. Well, the dinner was good. My cob salad was excellent. My sandwich was excellent. Yeah. My salad had to be at least an eight mm -hmm. for a cob salad. It was really good. I'd almost go a nine. Um, this parking lot is not very level at all. Sorry about the wind. My goodness. The timing. It wasn't even that bad. It's been kind of dying down until right then. <laughs> so, um, 
it was kind of hard leveling over here and blocks wanted to slip we had to park here on the end um, when you it's the most level spot and then you got to level one that other side over there the left side but the rest of the parking lot it really slopes uh, downhill and they want you to park to that side over here that has that view that's where the sunrise will come up tomorrow hopefully we'll get a shot of the sunrise and uh, had a beautiful sunset that was over here tonight it's a really beautiful area mm -hmm. very pretty it's it's a definite must stop and if you can eat outside if the weather's nice it's a covered patio there overlooking mm -hmm. the course tomorrow morning the bugs are coming out <laughs> not tomorrow morning they're coming out now but anyway tomorrow morning we're gonna head to Iowa um, go to Honey Creek State Park we're gonna get inside because we're I getting think we're gonna get taken away Sun, beautiful morning. Um, I'm gonna step over here out of the wind here a little bit. So when we called, we had asked where we uh, where we parked, and the kid in the golf shop uh, twice on the phone, and then when we got here, we confirmed with him this right side of the parking lot in the parking lot. We even double checked with him and said, "Well, there's a rock road there beside the parking lot," and he said, "No, in the parking lot." Well got up this morning there's a motorhome in the rock area where it is much more level so FYI I'm pretty sure that's where some of the RVs are supposed to go apparently it's safe to get in and out because the motorhomes here it just all depends on who you talk to sometimes if you're doubting and it just doesn't smell right to you <laughs> or look right to you uh, try to ask somebody else that's what I usually do and there was nobody else around uh, other than a couple uh, ladies in the dining area. So last night we didn't get to really test the uh, Alda system because it only got down to 60 and it was actually really comfortable because it got uh, pretty warm yesterday in the 80s and uh, we just opened windows. It felt really good. This morning I did turn on the Alda system, let it run for a while. The uh, batteries were at 12.5. Uh, or 12, no, 12.6. And then I turned the Alda system on. It got nice and warm in here. And then I uh, turned the shower boost on. So this is on gas only. The system uses the electric, you know, to for the electrical portion of it as far as igniting and, and to, uh, you know, turn the system on. A couple things charging. I had our Netgear Nighthawk. I had that charging. Had the laptop charging all night. We turned on the inverter. We have a 1000 watt inverter and the only thing that runs is your entertainment system. So the TVs won't work unless that inverter is on when you're off of shore power, when you're dry camping. So that includes the projector, uh, these components, um, the Bose sound system. We have put the uh, blinds up and down. This is all what we've been doing off of battery. Um, course we've used the lights getting ready ran all of that and now the system is down to 12.4 on the house batteries so 12.4 that pretty much equates to 50 percent of your batteries left and we have two uh, six volt batteries and as far as running the tv i didn't tell you how long we ran it so we ran we played uh two shows which were an hour apiece so we ran that system over two hours uh, and again that's the projector and the Bose system the projector I'm pretty sure is an LED so LED does not use up much battery at least we know that we can go at least two nights the next thing we want to test is when it's cold in the night and then we're going to test and see how much battery drain it does when we're running this Alda system it shouldn't drain much because we're just if you're dry camping you're only running this on uh, the propane and um, unless you have a, a generator you have a generator then you can run it obviously off electricity as well and uh, or both to get it hot quicker but a nice hot shower the shower is working great and I stayed in there 
equivalent to two showers myself without even budging the handle to increase the hot water. Um, it never did start getting cool, so I didn't have to move the handle. It was, in fact, there was a lot of room to go. And I didn't even use the switch to shut the water off in between, like when you're lathering up and that. Thought we'd share that with you and uh, gives you an idea of what you can do when you don't have a generator. Now, as far as air conditioning, if we needed AC, that'd be a different story. Some people do this lifestyle just so they can chase the 70 degree weather but we'll uh, we'll be getting a, a generator we're just uh working our way there and it's good to test these things out like this and so we learn from it and you learn from it um but uh yeah michelle's gonna finish getting ready so just another couple hours and then uh, we're gonna go <laughs> she says i'm funny I just about forgot to tell you about the uh, internet speeds here at Deer Run, the TPC Deer Run Golf Course and Grill. Uh, so I set the uh, the T-Mobile here, AT&T here, and doing the tests off here, which, and then I'm going to run my visible, which is Verizon test, and leave it in the same spot. So the T-Mobile got a 13.3. Uh, download 7.65 upload AT&T again is strong 50.4 download 10.6 upload and Verizon did better 24.5 download and 9.59 upload the T-Mobile pinged at 48 milliseconds AT&T pinged at 52 and Verizon pinged at 99 so that kind of gives you an idea of uh, this area I think we'd be good with either one of them. When you get to peaceful places like this, sometimes it's hard to leave. Just want to enjoy it, especially in the weather, it's so nice. We're gonna go a different route. Um, there's two routes, and they're about, I think it was 10 miles difference. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we're gonna take Interstate 80. Gives you more fuel options too, if we need it. And um, in this area, fuel is only, it's like 309, but 30 miles up the road, I hope that tail swing doesn't hit that fence. You go take a look. All's good. So I think the place we're going to stop at was 278, 278 or 279. I'll have to look again. But we've got a couple other places that we're going to stop along the way um, that'll make the trip a little more worthwhile. Used to be home, passing by those little towns I know so well. Stopping for gas, and then I'm behind the wheel again. Driving this like a spiritual cleanse, where every mile is a new beginning, and every bend holds a new end. Eyes on the road, don't lose control. I'm speeding fast to chase my soul. I'm driving to get away. Emotions high and low Holding on or letting go I'm fighting Another day the Neon lights in the fast lane light Riding high, reaching for the sky I had it all but lost And fell back down again Spent my time playing the game Where every single day was a losing battle And every drink was a dead end I'm living fast, I've lost my soul I'm driving to get away Running through emotions I went ahead and filled up the def for the first time at a truck stop. Hopefully their, their DEF is as good as some of the ones you can buy. Some of the better brands. There's a lot of back and forth about that issue or about that subject i should say i don't know thought we'd give it a try here i noticed it was only 
$7.77 for a two and a half gallon, as opposed to um, like blue, or some of the cheap stuff at Walmart is even cheaper, but I don't know about using that. <laughs> Ever been to the world's largest truck stop? Well, you're about to go. Hours in, but we spent the night halfway in the trailer. So. Yeah. Been a while since we've been to the world's largest truck stop. I know. Gotta get your picture by the I 80 sign. Yeah. Texas, you have your Bucky's. Oh. We have our one world's <laughs> largest truck stop. This isn't it right here. There's more. I think you should get a pair. <laughs> hey. An Aaron's dream. I'll be darned. Are we there yet? Although they're way not my size. I don't know, you can't now because of COVID or they just quit doing it all together. I can see how it could be a hazard for little kids. But big place, a lot of different places to eat. An embroidery shop, you can get your own hats and have your logos embroidered. Thought about it, but need a little time for that. Oh, and they do have a buffet. And if you want, you can buy a guitar. <laughs> and go back to your RV sing on the road again. <laughs> the food. You feel nervous about driving out of here? Oh, here doesn't bother me. It's the interstate. All right. I burned out like a wandering ember. I shone bright, then my journey was over. What I sought when I ran was back where I began No matter the rain No matter the storm I'm coming home I'm coming home Leave open the gate Don't turn off the light I'm coming home Ooh. I gained all that I knew for a price In the end, what I found was nowhere near as nice No matter the rain, no matter the storm I'm coming on, I'm coming on With my claws and teeth 
So I elbowed my way to a seat There'd be no kind of peace like you beside me No matter the rain, no matter the storm I'm coming home, I'm coming home As it seems in the photo, nothing is as sweet going so long. We stopped here in a little town called Albia at an outside uh, car wash here. Pulled the truck through, washed it, and then pulled the airstream through and, and washed it. It needed a bath bad. All right, we're just about there. We're just like within 30 minutes. Anxious to see my mom. No matter the rain, no matter the storm, I'm coming home. Oh, I'm coming home. Open the gate, don't turn off the light. I'm coming home, I'm coming home. Mm -hmm. Here we are, Lake Rathbun at Honey Creek State Park. They have a Corps of Engineers and then they have a state park campgrounds on this lake. We like this, uh, the state campgrounds here. Right at dusk, you have deer that are crossing right here every night. Deer crossing the other side of the road every night. They're just all over in here. And uh, last year, we remembered there was a three-legged deer. My mom had just asked us if we'd seen that three-legged deer yet as we were driving her home. We drop her off, come back, and there's that three-legged deer just as we're driving up, crossing right in front of us, and the only deer. But um, anyway, uh, we're ahead right now about four weeks, four to five weeks, from uh, where you're seeing us, and that's because I tried to get ahead so that I could help my mom and Michelle's mom if she needed help uh, while we're here. And of course, see uh, some of our other family, especially those little grandkids. Because you ever notice those grandkids, they never, they, they're so sweet, they never talk back to you. Well, sometimes. But anyway, all right, well, I'm going to head over and um, start helping my mom. We're going to do, or I, I'm going to do some uh, landscaping today. It'll feel good and get some of that done. So peaceful here at uh, Honey Creek at Lake Rathbun. I'm going to uh, head in and uh, help my sister and mom uh, set up for my sister's wedding that is going to be tomorrow. Got rehearsal tonight. Hi, I'm, I'm the bride's uh, brother. Hi, I, I'm I, the bride's brother's wife. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we're together. Well, I come over here because I heard you like pie. <laughs> they, they have a couple in here if you want to bake them. Really? Let's call it a day. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click that little bell, and hit that thumbs up. See you next week.